here. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I think maybe talking Dwayne to come to California. Really? I don't know. Um, Just got to get him used to that beach life. Yeah. I mean, he. so he's been coming down. Like I said, uh, my fight camp was... 10 weeks long from for, with him. I was longer, but with him, it was 10 weeks and he was flying out three days a week. So every Monday he would land, he would leave Wednesday night Wow! and we would train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and the, hard, right? I make sure to take like Thursday off and then do my other stuff while he's gone. But every week he was traveling back and forth. That's fucking dedication right there. Dude, I have, we're family now, you know, like yeah. he's lived in my house. Like he's on the meal plans with the Calvitas. Like he's full bore into it. Like he gives me his all. I'm I'm a very fortunate person to have met Dwayne and it's an amazing our, relationship. Our relationship, yeah, how close yeah, it is. It really is. And yeah. I mean that's the ideal when you can get a mentor and a and a, a student that have that kind of a bond together and you can learn so much. Yeah, and he won't let like we have such a good bond now too that he won't like let bullshit slide. He won't be pumping mm -hmm. me up for no reason. Right. He won't like let me I mean, I'm not a lazy guy, but if I was he wouldn't let me like mispractice or right. you know. I mean he almost has to pull me back more than anything. But uh he gives me this true assessment of what needs to be done. Mm. Um, I obviously lost the pseudo. We got home and he instantly texted me. He's like, hey, I'm coming out tomorrow. I'm going to work out with uh, Juan, but I'd love to get some work in with you. We just, some things we should go over. I was like, all right. <laughs> wow. So like I was working out with him three days after the fight. What did he say about that exchange? Um, he says like he, maybe he needs to uh, change some things on the mitts and maybe like so, for instance, the whole exchange, uh, I think I closed the distance too hard. Henry Suda switched up who he was as a fighter. Uh, I think he came out differently, which was great by him. He's done great things. He, um, I expected him to maybe run a little bit more, and he came out aggressive. Um, and so getting used to the distance control, you know, not always having a set plan and, and going for those combos, what I think is going to happen, to be able to adjust on the fly. And maybe me and him, sometimes we are too set on certain things rather than um, reaction time stuff, you know, and I need to react to distance change. I need to react to things like that. It's hard to really change anything on that fight because I didn't get a chance to see it either. Right. You know, it was so, so quick. Now, do you, have you talked to Dana or anyone since? I know you said that you guys would talk in the future, but it's been about what? How many days? It's been about a week or so? It's been two, uh, about a week and a half. Yeah. It's been a week and a half now. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything since the, the day after the fight, I was texting with him the day after the fight, and he said they had to sit down and figure out what the plan is kind of thing, you know. Um, but obviously, everyone knows that we want to run it back, and, and it sounds like they do as well, too. So, Well, as far as something that people want to watch, whether it's at 35 or 25, yeah. I think people absolutely would like to see that. I mean, at 35, the big selling point would be Henry gets a yeah. chance to become champ champ. Of course. Dude, I'll fight him at 25 and put my 35-pound belt on the line. I, I think really, that works that way. I know it doesn't, but I, I'm saying like <laughs> – if you beat me, like I'll just, like I seriously, like I wouldn't, Give even, it to I seriously don't even care. Like, yeah, the belts are awesome, all that stuff, and the rec recognition, all that stuff. But to me, I want that, I want that win back. I, I want that opportunity back to even just show how much work and how smart I was and how I didn't get, I didn't get hit and, and I wasn't fragile from being at 25. Right. I really wasn't. Like, I wasn't like, um, I didn't get beat because I was a 25 pounder. I felt I have no excuses. I got beat because I got beat, right? I have no excuses that I was too fragile at being at 125. I mm -hmm. felt better than I've ever felt my entire life. I just want the chance to prove that. You know right. what I mean? So that's why I say that I would give him my belt at 35s if he beats me at 25s again. But well, I'll obviously take the fight wherever. I mean, I think Ali needed Frazier, right? Yeah. Sugar Ray needed Tommy Hearns. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just the, this is the nature of the sport. And yeah. a guy like him, I mean, I think you you and Cody needed each other. Yeah. I think there's something about that kind of intense rivalry yeah. that is so important for 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 actualizing. For and Cejudo's a motherfucker, man. He's good. I mean, he's a he's a world he's a Olympic gold medalist. He's a competitor. He knows what he's doing, right? I mean, just arguably from his accomplishments, he's yeah. one of the greatest combat sports athletes of all time. Yeah, the guy's an, the first guy ever to be an Olympic gold medalist and a, a UFC world champion. Which I, the gold medalist thing, I even hold even higher for him than even being a world like. Obviously, UFC champion is huge, right? Mm -hmm. But I wrestled my whole life. I grew up wrestling. And to be an Olympic gold medalist is a fucking huge thing. Yeah. Um, I still think today wrestling is the hardest sport I've ever done. And to, to see that achievement, especially how young he did it at, mm -hmm. that's I almost hold that higher than him being a, a UFC champion. Well, also the fact that he was beat by DJ. He beat by, beat by Mighty Mouse in the first round. He yeah. gets destroyed. He gets kneed to the body, taken out, beaten up, and stopped and humiliated, yeah. right? Comes back, mm -hmm. and what was it, like two years later? 
and I think fucking it was beats years, him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And beats him. Mm-hmm. I mean, becomes the fucking champ and beats the pound for pound consensus best fighter on the planet mm-hmm. and the guy that had held that title from the very first time it was ever brought to the UFC. He's been the only flyweight champion until Henry came along. So, And that's another reason why I want that fight, man. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I know yeah. that I'm better than him. Obviously... You're gonna give me some. Sh- people are gonna give me shit for saying that because obviously the fight they, they all think it went down the way it went down. But guess what? I'm better than that motherfucker, and I want to prove it. I want the toughest fights. I mean, that's why I was calling out Max Holloway. I wanted to. I wanted yeah. to beat Henry Cejudo. I want to call Max Holloway with Sam Calvita. I could be walking around 165 pounds with six percent body fat. You know, really? like 100 percent. Like this guy, man, he can stack the weight on me. He can take it off me. I can go. I have a secret weapon with Sam Calvita. I'm telling you, and I could have. It's not it, a secret. You just yeah. You blurred but, it out. But <laughs> but people, he won't work with everyone. He won't really? do it. Yeah. If you come to him, like unless you fit who he he likes, if you fit his image, like we what work out of like? his, we work out of his garage. I know that, which is so crazy. You know, like he I could mean, have a giant facility with all his hard work and science he does, but he likes the the grit of having it in his house. Like he gets home from work, he's all dressed up in his tie. Sometimes we're already there waiting for him, and he's doesn't even change. He's out there throwing medicine balls at our face in his tie, and all dressed up from his suit from work. You know, like. <laughs> He likes that shit. You know, wow, he could probably not even be a calculus teacher anymore and just be a strength conditioning coach, but that's not what he wants. You know, he's not in it for the fame and the money. He's in it for the science and the love of doing it. I want to see that garage. Get, pull pull up his garage because this doesn't. Now I'm thinking about how big my fucking gym out here is. You couldn't even park two cars in it. <laughs> it's it's a small garage. We have one uh, one squat rack. We have a spot to do like our cleans and our um, deadlifts. What he really has is he has three, four bikes, or no, three bikes. So there it is. Yeah. That's crazy. So it's a yeah. very small two-car garage yeah. that he's got filled with a bunch of murderers. Yeah, he's got like three bikes that we ride. Jesus like, Christ, bikes. imagine walking by if you were a girl. The, oh, dude, all the time. <laughs> people people walk by all the time. We're in the garage, and I, I'm yelling when I'm in there working out because he's pushing us. Like right. Sometimes our workouts are three hours long. Yeah. You know, and we're going, there's a park across the street and we're throwing medicine balls there's at Pico. each other. And go to that, back to that last one with Pico, please. Yeah. You get a chance to see what's in the, the garage. So he, I guess he parks his car in the driveway. Oh yeah. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't park. That's his sanctuary, man. That's crazy. Uh, he's got these stationary bikes in there that where he kills us on. That's like, um, how we push our lactate thresholds. So what does he, he's doing something with bands right here. Is that yeah. He, that's he does a lot of things with bands, right? Yeah. Cause you get the eccentric and concentric contraction. You know, you have a strength, He's like, he's doing it there is for your shoulder stability, mm-hmm. you know, your rotator cuffs. I mean, yeah. with the jujitsu and the wrestling, your shoulders take a beating. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of really just strengthen it. Yeah, I do a lot of cuff stuff because uh, the, all the, the different injuries that I've had, I do a lot of band stuff with my, you know, like yep. these, this way. The external way. rotation, yeah. internal rotation stuff. Yeah, bands are great. <laughs> now, why bands, though, as, a pro- as opposed to cables, like cables with uh, stacks of weight? Why does he use bands? Probably just what's what we have. I mean, if you had a nice Kaiser machine in there, maybe we'd use it. But I think um, the resistance coming back really, really wants to pull. The further you extend a band, the harder it wants to pull you back Mm -hmm. to where when you have a weight on there, it's the exact same weight going in and out. Right. To where the further you extend that band, the harder you make it on yourself. Mm -hmm. There's, I think there's just more you can do with it. And it's just very easy and takes up no space. Right. Right. We do a lot of medicine ball work um, for our core and for our shoulders as well, too. Like catching in weird angles uh, with keeping our balance. Um, We do like a lot of like kind of like old school shit but in a certain way in a certain time. Yeah, and so how does he get all that shit into his garage? Does he have to pull stuff out into the driveway? There's stuff on the side of his house. He's got like a little chest he stacks stuff into. And <sighs> um, man, we a lot of it's, he doesn't need much. He really doesn't. There's a, there's a lot of work you can do with just body weight. Mm-hmm. Med- I mean, we have 100-pound medicine balls. We got these big logs, and he makes it like – it's almost like uh, the strongman competitions. There's a big <laughs> there's a big hill next to his house that he makes us carry these, like, 100-pound logs, and we have the farmers carry them up the hill, and we're doing it with a partner. And when I get up so far, I drop my run back. I get the 100-pound medicine ball. I have to sprint up the hill with it, things like that where you're pushing your, your lactate threshold over time. Wow. Yeah. And how does he schedule the the training sessions? Like, how does he know what to have you do and when? Off of our time frame of when we want to peak, off of my heart rate variability and how my body's reacting to our training. Because maybe I sparred and I did mitts too hard with Dwayne. So I wake up the next morning and he realizes, oh, we got to pull back today. Like, if I push you hard today, you're going to go in such a deep hole that it's going to take you a week to come out of it. Mm. To where he only wants me to get to that really high peak 
take a day off so that now I can start coming back up again to where if I just continue for four or five days, just crushing it, going right. as hard as I possibly can, my body's going to crash so hard that it's going to take me, it's going to be more of a detriment to come out of that hole than if I would have just taken a break in between those days. So he'll, he'll schedule, uh, our schedules will change. We have a, we have a schedule from the beginning. So say I'm 12 weeks out, like, all right, this is our plan. That's what we're going to do. But then maybe I get sick. Or maybe I trained too hard with Dwayne the day before. And so he'll realize, all right, this next day, let's, let's go a little bit easier. Even if it's my jujitsu, he knows I'm going to jujitsu practice. He's like, maybe just drill. You know, go with Felipe and just make sure it's a, like a low base drill. Like don't get your heart rate over such and such, which mm. I don't roll with the heart rate monitor on, but I can, can kind of just guess, you know, how hard I need to go. Yeah, I've never ro- – could you? I guess you could. Does yeah, anybody? You, do you know anybody that does? Mm-mm. No. It seems like it would get knocked off or something, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe for drilling. Yeah. You know. So w- when he's got you doing all this crazy stuff like deadlifts and plyos and all medicine ball work, um, does – is there like a logic to what exercises are done when mm-hmm. and like how does he like because it seems like you're doing all this old school stuff like badass stuff mm-hmm. but my question is always like when do you do that yes like when is that when is that done like once a week is that done early in the training camp is it done late like when are you doing strength work and you're because you were saying you were doing cleans mm-hmm. like the week out Mm-hmm. Only uh, so when I'm doing those like a week out, I'm doing them only a certain amount of reps. Um, you know, I'm not maybe not taxing my body for as long as I would in earlier camp. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm going heavy, maybe I'm only doing two sets. You know, right. just to keep my central nervous system strong. You right. know, because oh, yeah. uh, other than just taxing yourself, you know, or there's certain times I'll like there's certain days he knows I need to get explosive power work, or some days I need to do cadence, fast foot, fast feet, um, cardio work. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has that all mapped out on what days are what, what weeks are what, depending on where I'm at my fight camp, or if I'm going 25s and if I want to stay as strong as I was at 35s, things like that, or if I end up going 45s, um, to be able to keep my 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 cardio up because. The thing was, if I were, if I were to go forty fives, I'm gonna have to put so much more muscle on. The worry is that I'm gonna lose cardio, right? You know, but he wants to be able to keep that lactate threshold and me keep my cardio if I'm able to walk around at 165 pounds. Now, um, what other stuff does he have you doing for recovery? Are you doing any sauna work? Are you doing ice baths? Like what kind of stuff? <clears throat> I have an infrared sauna. I do um, uh, do red light therapy. I do. Um, uh, What's, got, what do you mean by red light therapy? There's a, uh, a machine that I have in my house is called a, a Juve. It's um, a big red light. It's a 680 to 880 nanometer light that I stand in front of it for a certain amount of time to um, not only increase my testosterone, but to help recovery in my, uh, my mitochondria and my cells and flush my body out. Um, uh, what does that thing look like? Whoa, look yeah. at that. Dude, you're in the future. Yeah. Is that you? No. no. Looks like it. Mm-mm. Dude's but, jacked. Yeah, um, but yeah, I have one of those in my garage. I have a uh, infrared sauna in my garage. Um, I do. How ma- big is that thing? That, uh, this thing well, th- is that, it- there's new ones now that are huge. Like it's as big as my body. Um, they have ones that go on the back of your door. They have travel ones that you can take with you. That's really small. Really. The reason why I got into it was for uh, um, increasing my testosterone and the, and the motility of my sperm. Holla. Yeah, because I was I was <laughs> I was having um, my testosterone was low. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to increase it, and I saw this um, through Matt Brown. Actually, Matt Brown's the one that kind of got me on this when I was out in Colorado. Immortal. Shout out to the he's got some awesome training equipment. Himself. Yeah, he's and he's a very knowledgeable, very well read guy. Very, and uh, you wouldn't like people wouldn't guess that. You well, know? I, when I had him on the podcast, that's one of the things a lot of people said. They go, "I thought that the guy was a caveman." <laughs> yeah, right. And he kind of is. But he's, he's also kind of brilliant. He wants to be the caveman, like manly man. Yeah, but he's very smart about yeah. it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, so he's the one that turned me on to that. And so I got into it and uh, I wanted to increase my testosterone, but I also read about uh, increasing motility in my sperm. I was trying to have a kid and we we're having mm-hmm. trouble and this and that. And it could be that, could have been my diet. I switched so much up that I can't tell you which one it was, you know, because Sam helped me out. This helped me out. I mean, so I'm. I'm doing that. I'll do hyperbaric chamber. I'll do cryotherapy. How often do you do the hyperbaric chamber? Um, only when I need it because it can mess with your um, your hematocrit. You know, if I'm, I'm, I do a lot of altitude training as well too. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to increase my red blood cell count and my hematocrit. Um, and then when you go and you get into a uh, hyperbaric chamber, you're breathing 100% oxygen. Mm-hmm. So if I'm in it too much, right, I see it what you're will saying. lower my hematocrit, right? But I do a lot of, he has a, he has an altitude, same as an altitude machine he has me use. It's called Auto Lab. 
Um, I breathed into it for a certain amount of time. And that's, again, another program he created. The company was around, but he created the program that I'm supposed to do to put my body in a hypoxic state for only a certain amount of time because you can overtrain yourself that way as well too um, to increase my capillaries, um, uh, increase the date of vasodilation in my veins, as well as increase red, blo increase, increase red blood cells. Mm 